Hello there guys, welcome to one of my live videos um, and on uh, this uh, video uh, this morning uh, these are uh, lots of things uh, to currently uh, talk about but um, I am uh, just going to give you uh, my overarching view um, on my um, you know of what I uh, think uh, to Jose Mourinho's uh, return uh, to um, Old Trafford now um, <coughs> You know, Solskjaer uh, did uh, mention, you know, uh, during um, his press conference uh, that he did uh, recently that, you know, uh, he's 100% sure that Jose Mourinho will get um, a warm reception uh, from, you know, Manchester United. So he'll get a good reception from the fans, you know, the staff and that. Because, you know, don't forget, you know, Jose Mourinho endured two and a half uh, years um, at the football club. Um, obviously, you know, he won the Europa League and the League Cup in his first season um, at Man United. Uh, plus, um, he spent... Um, substantial amount um, of the club you know he spent was it 400 million or just under 400 million pounds um, on um, 11 players now obviously take into account uh, Solskjaer um, is inheriting uh, the vast uh, majority um, of them because obviously you know the vast majority of them players that we've got um, are Jose um, Rinos but I did give you the variety of reasons obviously you know why his two and a half year tenure didn't uh, work out for him um, at Old Trafford is because obviously you know he had uh, bad disputes uh, with the board <laughs> He had bad disputes there with the top players, especially Paul Pogba. And obviously, you know, the board weren't back in the signings that he wanted to recommend in, uh, to the football club uh, last summer. Um, but overall, you know, Jose Mourinho um, is a very, very um, good uh, manager. You know, he has got a fantastic pedigree behind him. Uh, so far, um, he has won 25 uh, major um, honours in his uh, managerial uh, career. Uh, and I do believe, you know, he will uh, succeed um, at Tottenham like I did put into the equation. Um, he's enjoyed a um, fantastic start to his uh, managerial uh, career uh, with Tottenham. Um, he has, um, you know, so far managed three games with Tottenham and he has uh, won uh, three games um, out of three, you know, two in the league, uh, one um, in the Champions League. So I think, you know, he's obviously you know, going to do uh, really, really well. Don't forget, you know, Mourinho is now inheriting uh, the vast uh, majority of Richie or Pochettino's players at Tottenham. So I think um, Jose Mourinho is obviously you now going to orchestrate, and orchestrate on making further and more investment um, in Tottenham's squad uh, next year. And I think he's looking to get a backup uh, striker uh, for um, Harry Kane. Uh, Jose Mourinho um, has got a contract with Tottenham until the end of the 2022-23 season. Um, he's on around uh, £15 million pounds a year now um, at Tottenham. So, um, Obviously, he's on almost double than what Mauricio Pochettino was on, and he's actually not on uh, more uh, than double what, than what currently uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer um, is on. And I've got to say, um, I think you've got to say that Jose Mourinho, you know, you know, from you know a Man United perspective, you know, was um, arguably um, our best manager uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson um, era, definitely. Um, you know, and I think a lot of Man United fans will now say that was one of the mistakes that we did uh, make was uh, getting uh, rid um, of Jose Mourinho. You know, maybe you know we should have uh, kept him on. Um, but you know, um, you know, obviously you now where uh, we did it, and obviously you now we paid a substantial amount. Obviously you now to get rid of him, you know, we give him around what a twenty odd million uh, pound uh, payoff when we did sack him. Uh, we did sack him in the Dece in December of two thousand and eighteen last year. Um, obviously you now after the uh, three one uh, defeat uh, to uh, Liverpool. <laughs> But I honestly do believe that he's uh, going to do uh, really, really um, well uh, with Tottenham. And uh, I just also want to put into the equation that um, Paul Pogba is not going to get that reunion this evening uh, with Jose Mourinho uh, because Paul Pogba um, is not uh, fully fit for the game, uh, like uh, Molly Guinness Solskjaer uh, did uh, confirm. There was rumours last week emerging out, this was prior to the Aston Villa game, that, uh, you know, Paul probably, you know, could return for the Tottenham game, but he's not uh, fully fit. Um, he's had an ongoing ankle injury. He hasn't played uh, since uh, September, so he hasn't uh, played uh, since that 1-1 draw uh, with Arsenal. And you can say um, he has uh, been um, a big uh, miss uh, in, that, in that midfield. Um, Solskjaer... Um, Obviously knows um, how much um, an imperative uh, player uh, that Paul Pogba is. He did say not too long ago that Paul Pogba, you know, was refusing to play for Man United um, and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because um, allegedly, you know, he's still 
Uh, he said allegedly saw it. He was faking his injury. Um, obviously, he still uh, wants to uh, leave uh, the football club, as Paul Pogba. So, um, basically, he revealed this at the beginning of the summer that he wanted to leave Manchester United because obviously he was uh, seeking uh, for um, a new challenge. And actually, publicly admitted that he did uh, want to leave uh, the football club uh, to uh, rejuvenate um, his career. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Paul Pogba, anyway, he's. Uh, you know, closer to uh, recovering uh, from injury. So I should presume, you know, he should be uh, playing um, at the weekend um, against Man City. Um, the good news is is that um, Tom Way, I think, uh, is uh, going to be uh, playing uh, this evening. Um, so he's expected uh, to play. Uh, don't forget, you know, he's had um, an ankle injury uh, like uh, Paul Pogba. And you can say also that um, Tom Way um, has been a um, big uh, miss um, in our uh, midfield. Um, he's only missed the last uh, three games, though. So, <laughs> you know, that's uh, not uh, too uh, bad, uh, really. Um, don't forget, Paul, uh, Tom and Way had to, had to withdraw from the Scotland squad uh, during uh, the international break. Uh, if you know, following the ankle injury, don't forget. He had initial scans um, on his ankle, um, obviously, to find out the extent um, of the injury. And obviously, you know, it was uh, quite uh, severe. Uh, but Tom Way could have played um, on Sunday against Villa, but um, obviously, you know, uh, didn't. So it'd be good to see him, you know, uh, back uh, this evening um, against uh, Tottenham. Uh, because, like I said, he has uh, been a um, revelation this season for Man United. Um, he has uh, deserved uh, to keep um, his place um, in the team um, as Tom Way. Um, but I don't know if he's uh, the long term uh, solution for Man United. And obviously, you know, uh, that's um, an element um, of concern. Um, but I'm glad he's going to be back because um, obviously recently due to McTomway's absence, he obviously we've had to go over midfield and um, Vandries, Pereira um, and Fred. And um, obviously a lot of Man United fans now um, do are uh, demanding Andres Pereira out. Obviously, you know, because a lot of Man United fans have got you know strong reservations about um, Andres Pereira. But I think he's had quite a lot of uh, bad uh, games uh, this season. Um, <laughs> But, you know, I just don't think they complement each other, you know, Fred and Pereira in our midfield. I think putting him at Tom Way there in the equation, you know, I think, you know, they do uh, blend in very, very well together. So, yeah, he provided us some news regarding them two. So, at Tom Way, I presume, will be uh, playing uh, this evening. But overall, um, it's very, very good anywhere uh, that our players um, are uh, recovering uh, from injury because, obviously, you know, effects on the injuries we've had this season anywhere, you know, Solskjaer um, has had to uh, make um, a lot of um, alterations in the squad. Uh, we have still got some injuries, by the way. Um, you know, we have got uh, Eric Bay still out with an injury. Uh, Diego Dalotza still um, out over leg injury. Um, Fossil Mensu still out uh, with a knee injury. Um, I think Matic is still out uh, with a minor problem. Um, but obviously, it's confirmed that all of them um, are uh, back um, in training, which is uh, very, very um, good uh, news. The good news is, is that recently, you know, uh, Luke Shaw um, has come uh, back from injury because he initially, you know, uh, was um, out over hamstring injury. Uh, don't forget, uh, Luke Shaw uh, did uh, play uh, the full 90 minutes. <laughs> He did uh, play uh, the full uh, 90 minutes um, against uh, FC Astana last week. He played the full 90 minutes. Uh, so too uh, did uh, Alex Tuanzebe. So that was uh, very, very um, good. You know, um, uh, and this is what I said, you know, regarding the senior players, you know, this is why, you know, we had no excuse, you know, not to beat um, Aston Villa um, at the weekend because obviously, you know, in the game against FC Astana, you know, we rested the vast majority of our senior players. You know, like I said, the only senior players that played were Shaw, Tuan Zebe, Jesse Lingard, who, of course, captained the team in that particular game and so to uh, Lee Grant. Apart from that, Solskjaer, you know, went, uh, all the rest of them uh, were young and Zermi um, went with. Don't forget, he recommended around 14, you know, about 14 teenagers, you know, uh, to uh, Kazakhstan. Um, and obviously, he handed around uh, seven uh, debuts out. Um, but, you know, Solskjaer obviously went with a lot of the young players in that particular game because he knew um, it was um, a meaningless game because, you know, we're already into the knockout uh, stages um, of uh, the Europa League. But like uh, I've said recently and before, I think it's our only route to Champions League football for next season is, is progressing in the Europa League because, I don't, you know, I'm very sceptical, you know, that we're going to get uh, that uh, top four uh, this season. Um
I'm very sceptical um, about it um, indeed. But if we're to get out um, this evening um, against Tottenham, you know, the performance has got to be totally comparison to what we saw against Aston Villa at the weekend, what we saw against Astana and what we uh, saw um, against uh, Sheffield uh, United. Because, you know, we are winless um, in our uh, last uh, three games, you know, and... You know, Solskjaer um, is under um, intense uh, pressure um, at the football club. Obviously, as well, uh, reflecting um, on our uh, disastrous uh, start to the season because, you know, we are enjoying um, our worst start to a Premier League season since, what, 1988, 1989. And, you know, we're sitting, what, now, 10th uh, um, in the league. Um, obviously, reflecting on, uh, you know, I think the Crystal Palace result uh, yesterday. You know, we've only registered 18 points from 14 league games um, and we've only won four games uh, so far uh, this season. You know, with um, what, just six points above relegation, is it? Um, eight points uh, behind uh, top four. Um, we're not going to get that top four uh, this season, but I did confirm um, at the start of this season that our expectations this season, you know, would have probably been to finish um, in that top four. Uh, so obviously it could create a platform and give us uh, something uh, to build on. Uh, but I did I did say, you know, our aspirations probably will be that top four in the next couple of seasons um, because obviously, you know, we're not good enough to win the league. We're not even good enough, you know, to mount uh, many uh, kind of title challenge up. But I did assure this, didn't I, at the start of this season that, you know, we're not, um, you know, that... Despite the three signs that were recommended in, I did say, you know, we're not going to win the league this season or we're not going to mount any kind of title challenge up. But I did expect to send Jar a better season this season. This is what I confirmed at the start of this season than uh, what I uh, saw uh, last season because obviously, you know, last season uh, was um, a huge uh, disappointment. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, we're not in that, uh, you know, commanding position, you know, that we uh, should be in. But Solja recently come out and said um, he's not uh, worried uh, regarding um, our uh, league uh, position. And um, But, you know, he's still aware that, um, in, you know, we need to um, improve. And there's a lot of aspects of our game uh, that uh, still uh, need to um, improve. Um, like I did say to you guys uh, yesterday, um, you know, Solskjaer is obviously aware of the pressure that he's under. He still does not uh, fear the sack. But he's reportedly uh, told um, our players if we lose tonight to Tottenham and we lose to Man City um, at the weekend, you know, he, you know, he said basically now um, he will be uh, sat. So basically we've got to win tonight and we've got to beat Man City for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's managerial tenure uh, to be uh, saved um, at the football club, basically. Um, reportedly as well, uh, Solskjaer um, is considering, um, um, you know... Um, a change of formation tonight as well, by the way, uh, because um, on a regular basis this season, you know, Solskjaer um, has gone with that 4 2 3 1 formation, and we do, we do know that, you know, hasn't uh, been uh, really working. Um, a couple of times, um, he has like gone, you know, with the three at the back. On the other occasion, he's gone there with a four three three. But I think reportedly tonight, um, he's uh, considering, you know, going there with three uh, central uh, defenders. Uh, so he has tried um, a few different elements. Um, don't forget though, Solskjaer went with three at the back against Liverpool earlier on in the season, and we did really, really well. We got a point off them. You know, we're the only we're the only team in the league so far this season to take anything from you know Liverpool. You know, we played three at the back against Paris and Belgrade away from home. You know, won uh, that game. So maybe it would be beneficial to try uh, three um, at the back uh, this evening um, against Tottenham. You know, so I think this is what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, is uh, considering, you know, uh, doing. But, you know, I'm very, very sceptical, you know, at this present time um, of Ed Woodward, you know, sacking um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. At the present time, anywhere, um, Ed Woodward, um, I think, you know, from his overarching view, he's got, you know, no intentions um, of sacking Solskjaer because he recently did say, you know, he's determined uh, to stand by uh, Solskjaer but if this uh, inconsistency does continue to persist, then I think, you know, um, Ed Woodward will uh, definitely you now uh, get rid of him. But, you know, due to our, you know, bad performances this season and <laughs> due to our bad performances this season and, you know, due to our uh, you know, bad uh, results and that, you know, Salskar is accountable for some of that, definitely. But like I've said to you on numerous occasions, you know, not um, all of the blame uh, does uh, stem uh, from him. You know, I think there's others that have to take responsibility. You know, for me, I think, you know, the vast uh, majority of the blame stems from the board, you know, because the board um, have been a liability uh, for several years. Um, you know, I also believe a lot of the blame stems from Ed Woodward. He's definitely accountable, so I think he replicates the board. You know, I still think there's... 
you know, players at Manchester United that are no longer, you know, good enough uh, to represent uh, the football club. Uh, so I think we need to get rid of at least another four or five more players uh, next year, despite the fact that a lot of players um, have left um, since uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer's um, arrival, definitely. And... You know, we need a um, change um, of management, basically. And there has been, you know, quite a few managers um, on our um, agenda, you know, uh, who could uh, replace uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer. I can definitely assure that, you know, Solskjaer uh, will not be um, here um, at the end um, of the season. You know, slight chance he could be um, here uh, by January, but I'm still actually quite sceptical um, about that. Um, but, you know, uh, don't forget, you know, we do sack Solskjaer. Um, obviously, you know, it's going to cost uh, the club um, a substantial amount. Uh, don't forget, you know, Solskjaer um, is on a three-year contract uh, with the football club and he had been uh, given uh, this three-year contract when he had been given the job in March um, earlier on uh, this year. And he is on, of course, um, around uh, £7.5 million. Uh, pounds, um, yeah. And again, that's another mistake uh, Manchester United did make uh, was uh, giving uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer uh, the job. And I think, you know, obviously, you know, with the vast majority of Man United fans demanding him out, including me, you know, I think it's, in a way, a sad situation because I do like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer deep down. You know, he's a, you know, a club legend and that, you know, we'll never forget, you know, what he did for the club um, as a player, you know, because he was a great long-serving player for us uh, for um, 11 years and that. Um, and, you know, we'll never forget what he did in that three-month period uh, when he was uh, the interim manager because he did really, really well, you know, when he first uh, got recommended in. Um, Obviously, one of his most iconic moments um, as manager, obviously, you know, was that 3-1 uh, win against PSG last season uh, when we did uh, produce uh, that uh, miraculous uh, comeback. But obviously, you know, you know, since he's got the job permanently, you know, everything seems to have, seems to have all gone wrong. And Solskjaer's been permanent manager now uh, for uh, nearly nine months, but he's been... In, he's, in total, he's been Man United manager uh, for uh, nearly a um, year. But what I've seen in this nine-month period almost is totally comparison to what I saw in that three month period uh, when he was uh, the interim uh, manager but you know I've just got you know element of concerns about him you know for the vast majority of this season he's been tactically naive some of his substitutions have been questionable and you know just hasn't got a pedigree behind him you know you know <sighs> He's just not. He just doesn't have any intuition on how to manage a big football club uh, like uh, Man United, and that despite the fact he knows the culture of the club, because he's only this is he's only managed three clubs so far, Solskjaer, including Man United. So before he was at Man United, he managed Mould. You know, he, to be fair, he won a couple of Norwegian titles with Mould. Obviously, before he was at Mould, um, he managed uh, Cardiff. But um, he only enjoyed them um, really a short uh, tenure uh, with Cardiff. You know, he only managed around what twenty nine or thirty games for Cardiff because he got the reason he got sat from Cardiff um, is because um, he ended up you know uh, getting uh, them relegated. And so Man United fans did fear, or still may fear, that he could replicate in Man United. You know what he uh, did uh, do uh, with Cardiff. Um, and that, um, but you know, he hasn't, you know, got um, a pedigree uh, behind him and that. But I, I did say I wanted his managerial tenure, you know, to work out for him um, at the football club. You know, I hope he can, you know, bring that winning mentality and that fear factor back to the club. And we know none of that's uh, been uh, there uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson um, era, you know, uh, none of that's uh, bit has been there. Um, reportedly, he's come out with Solskjaer and said, obviously, you know, our fans, you know, do um, understand um, his philosophy. You know, he revealed in the summer that he was, you know, following um, Alex uh, Ferguson's uh, philosophy in that. Um, but, yeah, you know, I don't think it's long now, you know, before um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, is sacked. Um, you know, don't forget, he is our fourth permanent manager uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson um, era. Um, but I did say, you know, Solskjaer definitely, you know, what invoke Ferguson's legacy at Man United to save him, you know, neither will any um, other uh, manager, you know, will never ever be the team uh, that we uh, was um, under um, Alex Ferguson, because like I took into account, uh, Ferguson developed a lot of young players, um, you know, he controlled the transfer policies, he controlled the contracts, um, you know, he always, you know, was ruthless in the transfer market, he's always got the right calibre players that he wanted, um, but I know that, you know, Ferguson uh, didn't uh, settle in straight away. You know, don't forget, you know, when we recommended him in from Aberdeen back in, what, 1984, Ferguson, you know, didn't win out um, in his uh, first uh, four uh, years um, at the club. Uh, but obviously, we know back in, you know, the old generation that, you know, managers got the time, you know, that they would have liked. Obviously, you know, in this generation, you know, that uh, doesn't um, happen um, anymore. Um, 
But you know, as as it as it's you know, there's a prime example, isn't there? You know, managers, you know, are getting sacked to left, right, and centre. You know, obviously, you know, Sanchez Flores from Watford got sacked recently. You know, Um Raimre got sacked from Arsenal um, last week, was it? Uh, Postino got sacked from Tottenham last month. Uh, so our managers are now uh, getting uh, sacked left, right, and centre. Um, I presume Solskjaer will be the next manager. It actually could be Marco Silva from Everton because, you know, he's also um, under um, intense uh, pressure uh, with Everton, is Marco Silva. Um, so, um, you know, um, he uh, could be uh, the next uh, to get a uh, It's between, I think, you know, Solskjaer and Marco Silva, you know, for the next uh, manager uh, to be uh, sat. Um, but, you know... You know, like I said, you know, we've already sat, you know, three managers uh, since uh, the Alex Ferguson era. Obviously, you know, we sat uh, David Moyes um, after uh, 10 months, you know, he endured um, really a short uh, tenure uh, with the football club, you know, did um, David Moyes. Um, obviously, we knew he was never the right man for Man United. Um, that was one mistake and the only mistake Ferguson made was recommending, you know, uh, David Moyes in, you know. With, you know, reflecting what he did at Everton, it was good, you know, because he did really, really well at Everton. He was a long-serving manager at Everton, but obviously didn't replicate that at Man United. Then obviously, you know, we got Van Garling, but he lasted uh, just over a year. We sacked him, despite the fact he won the FA Cup with the club. And, you know, he spent, you know, a substantial amount at Man United. You know, he brought a lot of players in. Obviously, the vast majority of Van Gaal's players have now obviously, you know, left. But there's still some of them here. And, uh, you know... Jose Mourinho lasted uh, two and a half uh, years um, in the football club. So I, I know we don't want to persistently, you know, keep uh, sacking managers, you know, because we haven't really uh, got uh, the structure to keep uh, doing that. But um, I just don't think now uh, we've uh, no uh, choice um, in the matter. You know, I was getting rid of Solskjaer. <coughs> you know, probably wouldn't solve any or wouldn't solve um, a lot of uh, problems um, at the football club. But we've just got to get, you know, the right manager in. You know, a manager, you know, that's got a good pedigree behind him. A manager, you know, that's got uh, the right philosophy, you know, for the club. And a manager, you know, who would be, you know, trustworthy, you know, to recommend uh, the right uh, calibre of players in uh, to uh, Man United and that. But I've just got to be honest with Solskjaer. I think, you know, the expectations um, are too high for him um, at the football club, definitely. But, um so, like I uh, give you, uh, you know, a not like I give you the uh, news uh, yesterday. Um, as you all know, it was stemming uh, from the Manchester um, Evening News. Um, I think a lot of United fans uh, would have updated you on it, um, including me. But it did say from the Manchester Evening News that Mauricio Pochettino uh, wants to become Manchester United's uh, next manager. Um, obviously, um, it didn't as you say that he wanted to be. He wanted uh, the managerial role at Man United. Um, after you know Jose Mourinho's dismissal in December of last year, um, but obviously you know, our preference uh, was Solskjaer because uh, taking into account um, he did really really well in that three month period uh, when he was uh, the interim manager. But at that time, um, Richie Pochettino uh, was our uh, primary uh, candidate, and I think you know we should have actually uh, recommended him in. Um, I'd, I'm pretty sure now we wouldn't have we wouldn't have to pay out to recommend him in because obviously Richie Pochettino um, is managerless. There was reports emerging out uh, not too long ago saying that is a, cla a clause, um, this clause of what Mitchell Pochettino has got uh, could stop us from replacing um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, something like that. But, you know, Pochettino isn't only linked uh, with the job at Man United. You know, there's been quite a few teams in for him. Don't forget, um, Arsenal um, are in for him. I'm actually very sceptical um, about him going to Arsenal. I don't see that um, happening. Um, Arsenal have got a list of managers um, on their um, agenda um, who could uh, replace, um, you know, Umaymer. Obviously, Umaymer is sat. Arsenal have obviously got Freddie Lundberg in um, on a temporary basis um, until uh, they do uh, get him um, a permanent uh, manager. Uh, Mitchell Pochettino, not too long ago, was as advised by his friends to turn down uh, the job um, at Arsenal. Um, you know, but uh, Mitchell Pochettino has confirmed, you know, he wants um, an immediate uh, return uh, to management. But my overarching view on it, Pochettino uh, won't be a managerless uh, for uh, long. He's also held talks with Bayern Munich. I think also Real Madrid um, have been in for him. Uh, Real Madrid were in for him before. I think it's actually, you know, when Zinedine Zidane uh, resigned. And he obviously, you know, he, he walked out of the Real Madrid job for uh, nine months. 
then obviously you know went back in uh, to the Real Madrid job, but Real Madrid job. But I think during that nine months when he you know step when he was not at Real Madrid, Real Madrid you know were looking to get um, Richo uh, Pochettino in. But I've very, I'm probably very convinced that you know he probably uh, stay um, in the Premier League anyway. But my perception on it, I think he you know would be the right candidate uh, for Man United. Would Pochettino? You know, I think he'd be the right man to elevate Manchester United forward. And I think if Pochettino came Man United, you know, I think he could, you know, I think he can replicate, you know, what he uh, did um, with Tottenham. Because I thought Pochettino, you know, did enjoy uh, five uh, good uh, years uh, with Tottenham and that. Um, I know he enjoyed a bad start. I, he enjoyed a difficult time this season uh, before um, he got sacked. But prior to that, I think um, he did uh, really, really well. Um, the only element of concern I've got about Mitchell Pochettino is that um, he hasn't uh, won out um, in terms of Misu. Uh, uh, but prior to that, I think he's a good manager, good at developing um, a lot of young players. Uh, Pochettino did obviously you know, spend uh, quite, a, quite a lot of money um, in that Tottenham squad over the five years um, he was there and that. But yeah. A uh, really, really good manager. He's managed three clubs so far as Pochettino his managerial, in his managerial career. You know, he honest, obviously managed Southampton before he was at Tottenham. I thought he enjoyed a great short tenure with Southampton. And obviously, you know, um, he was um, Espanyol. Um, so he has been managing for just um, over um, a decade because he began his managerial career um, in 2009. Yeah, but yeah, Pochettino does want to take the man from um, Man United, which I, knew he, which I knew he would. I said, you know, you know, you know, Man United job does become vacant. I think he will definitely uh, grasp uh, that um, opportunity. Um, despite the fact that he's not at Tottenham now, Pochettino, maybe teams that want to recommend him in, you know, may still have to hold uh, negotiations with Daniel Lever. And as you all know, uh, Daniel Lever um, is a very um, hard uh, negotiator. So just uh, wanted to uh, take that um, into um, account and that. So it's likely, you know, Pochettino will be our next manager. If he does come in, he will be um, our fifth permanent manager uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson era, uh, definitely. But I definitely can assure he will uh, do um, a better uh, job uh, than Solskjaer. Um, Obviously, you know, uh, these still uh, talks are going on uh, regarding uh, Maz Miliano um, Allegri. And that he's still reported not too long ago saying that he's um, interested um, in replacing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, at Man United, Maz Miliano um, Allegri. Um, he still says he's interested in com uh, coming in. Um, obviously, you know, Arsenal, um, you know, have got Maz Miliano, Maz Miliano Allegri um, on their um, agenda and that. Um, but, you know, it's more imminent we'll get Pochettino. You know, maybe Arsenal uh, could uh, get uh, Maz Miliano uh, Maligri. Uh, don't forget, um, at one point, you know, Maz Miliano Maligri uh, was actually, you know, um, our primary uh, candidate uh, to uh, replace uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer. I think this was prior to the Liverpool game when Maz Miliano Maligri was our primary candidate because he actually held negotiations with the football club regarding, you know, what salary that he would earn if he was to be recommended in. He also did a show a few things um, if he was uh, to come in as well, uh, did Maz Miliano um, Allegri. Um, you know, my, my preference would be Pochettino over Maz Miliano Allegri uh, because Pochettino is well Premier League proven, you know, obviously Maz Miliano Allegri taking into account um, has never managed in the Premier League. Um, he has... Um, so far, actually, spent the entirety of his uh, managerial career um, in the Serie A. And like I did put into the equation, Maz Miliano Allegri has emulated himself up um, over the, the years because he began by small by managing small, various Italian clubs, um, but emulated himself up, like I said. And, you know, the recent club he managed was Juventus. He resigned as Juventus manager at the end um, of last season. You know, he won the vast majority of his silverware with Juventus. He also progressed them to two Champions League finals, but obviously, you know, Juventus uh, lost uh, both uh, finals. Um, he also spent the entire time um, of his uh, playing uh, career um, in Italy, you know, don't forget. So it said not too long ago that he was learning English in preparation uh, for his uh, potential move. But I can't see us now getting Ma Maz Miliano Ligue in. I think it's probably more likely, you know, we'll uh, get um, Richo uh, Pochettino in um, over him. Um, but Arsenal, you know, could, you know, get uh, Maz Miliano um, Ligue. Uh, but like I said to you, Arsenal have got quite a few uh, managers um, on their um, agenda anywhere. No, Vier is on their agenda. Carlo Ancelotti. Uh, Nuno Santos is also um, on their um, agenda. So too is Brendan Rodgers. Um, so they have uh, got um, a lot of uh, managers um, on their um, agenda. Uh, 
Um, and I think, you know, you could say, you know, we also need um, a director of football. Um, and it was a shame, you know, that we didn't get a director of football in uh, during uh, the course um, of the summer. Because I did pinpoint out uh, that's one of the structural changes uh, that we uh, do uh, need um, at the football club. And like I said, there was quite a few former Man United players linked with the role. Um, obviously, Edwin van der Sar now um, is out of um, the equation because it, not too long ago, he signed um, a contract term extension at uh, with Ajax, but I did say, you know, if we are to recommend um, a new director um, of football, and you know, we need someone who knows the traditions of the club, someone who, of course, who would be reliable uh, to um, obviously um, our transfer business, but I don't think we're going to get a director um, of football in um, just um, as yet. But um, I think, you know, my overarching view basically is that, you know, the three signings that Solskjaer uh, recommended into the club uh, during uh, the summer, you know, you can say have been um, our best uh, players uh, this season. And I don't think any of them are accountable for um, our bad performances um, and bad results and that because I think they've all done well. You know, we spent nearly um, £150 million on Daniel James and Wan Bissaka and on Harry uh, Maguire. Uh, you know, like I said, Daniel James has enjoyed um, a fantastic start to his Man United career. You've got to say, you know, um, he's been a um, revelation this season as Daniel James, you know, reflect on his good performances. And I'm actually surprised the amount of games he has played. Obviously, when we signed him in the summer, I did expect him to play games, but not as many games to the extent um, as he has done. Um, you know, I don't, I didn't think he'd have been a first choice to be quite honest with you. But obviously, he's emulating, he's emulating himself up, and he's taken a huge step in his career. You know, coming all the way from the Championship uh, to the Premier League. But I think you know he's done uh, really, really well as Daniel James and. Um, you know, there's still some aspects of his game that do need to improve, but obviously he's um, only at the age of 21. I've been impressed with Anwan Bissaka. Um, I think he's done really, really well. Some people believe he's actually been our most consistent signing, and I do believe he can be our right backer for the next um, decade. Can Bissaka? Um, I think he's on, on the verge of getting a suspension because um, I think he's nearly um, on a fifth day booking, so we do have to watch out uh, for that. Um, and Harry Maguire, um, you can say, you know, he's done really, really well. Um, you know, we do, we still seem to be conceding goals. We look slightly better defensively, but we still seem to be uh, conceding uh, goals. Um, I do agree on the aspects that we did um, overpay uh, for uh, Harry uh, Maguire because, you know, was it 70 million up front with 10 million in add ons, which did potentially rise up to uh, 80 million pounds? You know, he's, I think he's. On that list, you know, of one of one of the best defenders in the league or the world, you can say, um, you know, you can say he's on that, you know, he's in the top five, maybe. He's, you know, he's totally comparison to Virgil van Dijk. You know, he's nowhere near on Virgil van Dijk's uh, level because, like I said, Virgil van Dijk is the best centre-half um, in the league, or should I say, um, in the world and that. But I still think he has uh, done uh, really, really um, well. Um, but like I said to you, you know, there's still some aspects of me now where that do credit Solskjaer and that, you know, he did recommend three good players in, in the summer. Um, he's also got a lot of uh, trustworthy, I mean, he's a young um, upcoming uh, players because, you know, the young players have been given their chances this season, which is absolutely uh, fantastic. And, you know, we have got um, a lot of uh, young players um, in the squad. Uh, that are developing and trying to, of course, um, improve. But, you know, like I said, the young players I've been impressed with this season, you know, I've been very impressed with Mason Greenwood. Um, I've been very impressed with Brandon Williams. You know, Solskjaer obviously now views him as his uh, first choice left back, uh, Brandon Williams. And I think he's a better solution than Ashley Young. Um, a much better solution than Ashley Young, a better solution uh, than Luke Shaw. Um, so he obviously, you know, I'm playing now uh, more uh, regular uh, with Brandon Williams. Um, he scored his first senior goal for the football club in the 3 3 draw uh, with Sheffield uh, United. But I do believe that, you know, Greenwood, um, Brandon Williams, two hands, Ebbe, James Garner, and that, I think they'll all become uh, successes um the football club. Definitely. Don't forget, um, I've got some element of concerns about, you know, some of the young players. So I think, you know, we need to get rid of some of them next year um, or sometime in the future. And I think if we could do that, you know, that would be a good piece of business from the football club. But, you know, I've got element of concerns about Chong. I've got element of concerns about, you know, Angel Gomez. Um, you know, I know, I know he's another one of our midfield options. Um, I've also got uh, concerns um, about um, Andres Pereira. So these, you know, young players uh, that uh, do uh, need to be uh, moved on. And I think, you know, we are still keen on recruiting young players into the football club. So I want to recommend more young players in, um, of course, 
Um, well, obviously, if Solskjaer's still manager in January, um, he's keen um, on, you know, getting uh, more uh, young players um, into uh, the football club. But, you know, we have got to address uh, the deficiencies um, in the squad next year. Um, you know, obviously, the one of the main priority areas is that midfield. You know, I think we've got to get an attacking midfielder in. Uh, we've also got to uh, get um, a defensive midfielder in. And we also need um, a striker, at least one. I think we need two attackers, you know, but we definitely need to recruit a replacement for Romelu Lukaku and Alexis Sanchez. Because you can quite frankly say, since their departures, you know, we've looked uh, very exposed um, in that um, attacking their line, definitely. Um, but, you know, Rashford has rejuvenated himself recently, you know, that's a positive. Um, I don't think he was too good against Villa, but prior to that, he's done well. Uh, Martial's added more inspiration that um, attack of her third um, in the pitch since he came back from his um, initial injury. Um, Daniel James has done well, but I think, you know, we just need to add more experience um, in that um, attack of her line, definitely. You know, we need someone who can create chances, someone who, of course, uh, can, you know, score a shower his goals. Um, because, you know, in the vast majority of our games this season, uh, we have uh, been uh, struggling uh, to create uh, chances. So, obviously, you can say uh, that's um, an element um, of concern, definitely. You can say uh, that's um, an element um, of concern, but, um, yeah. Uh, Jesse Lingard, um, he would, don't forget, he was injured earlier on in the season. Um, I thought he had... A good ten minute. I thought it was good in the first ten minutes against FC Astana. Didn't do too bad, uh, but I think analysing the vast majority of his performances this season, he has been very, very poor, and he hasn't formed to the standards as we should expect from him. So we do need to see uh, better uh, from uh, Jesse Lingard, definitely. But I'd still say he's uh, the long term uh, solution uh, for uh, Man United. But like I was saying, um, I think uh, the problematic players at the football club um, are, you know, young. Um, Ashley Young definitely needs to be moved on. Um, moved on next year. He's past his sell by date. He's thirty five. He's thirty five next year. Um, you know we shouldn't have given him that one year extension uh, last season. But these question marks regarding Solskjaer and that, you know, he has still been um, playing Ashley Young um, on a regular basis uh, this season. You know, maybe is it something to do with the injuries we've had? So he's obviously had no alternative but to play Young. But you know we have got a lot of fullbacks in the team anywhere. A variety of them that can obviously you know compete. Um, <coughs> uh, Jones, he's definitely you know one of the uh, problematic uh, players. <coughs> I think you know we definitely need to move him on. You know we shouldn't have given him a new long term contract last season. Uh, Matic definitely one of the problematic players. Um, you know some people say we also need to get rid of uh, Marcus Rojo. So these definitely you know are more players that uh, do uh, need to uh, leave uh, the football club. But from the overarching view. I think we need at least five to six more signings if we are to be back to being a competitive elite level football club and if we are to be a future title contenders, definitely. But we have got um, a lot of uh, players um, on our um, agenda. Uh, I think we're going to get around, what, £200 million to spend next year, obviously in January and for next summer. So £100 million in January, £100 million next summer. Is £200 million going to be enough you know, to address the deficiencies in the squad? Is it going to be enough you know, uh, for us to bring the right number of players, and you know, we shall see. Um, it's just basically, you know, dependent on you know how well uh, we are uh, with our uh, recruitment. You know, like I've said on numerous occasions, are we going to be sensible with it, or um, are we uh, going to um, overpay uh, for our players? And uh, that is uh, the question, basically. Um, but you know, we will uh, see. Um, you know, it's not long now till the January window opens. Um, we will be doing regular, you know you know, videos on, you know, transfer dailies and that, um, you know, as we always do uh, when the transfer window um, is open. Um, I, I'm always excited, you know, when the transfer window, you know, does come. But definitely our uh, recruitment um, has definitely now uh, got to um, improve, guys. Um, but, yeah, um, that's uh, mainly um, everything uh, to update you with today. Um, um, you know, I just wanted to say that I think, you know, Jose Mourinho is the best manager, you know, we've had since Ferguson era. My overarching view on him on his return to Old Trafford um, is that, you know, I've, you know, I forgot to maybe agree with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer that maybe he will get um, a warm uh, reception, you know, from the staff and all the fans and all the rest of them, the players and that, maybe he will. Um, but we know Paul probably, you know, he's not going to be having uh, that reunion uh, with him this evening. But this is going to be an extremely difficult game. Like I said, Tottenham are doing well, you know, the fifth in the league. They're only two points ahead of us. 
So if we can get a win tonight, you know, that will push us uh, further um, up uh, the table. Uh, but we will uh, see anywhere. So anyway, guys, drop your comments, likes below on the channel. Um, if you do, consider subscribing um, as always. And take care. God bless. And I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.